Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Friends, today we will learn about plotting in R. In this lesson, we are going to learn about scatter plots. For scatter plots, we use command plot. And after plot command, we use these parentheses. And inside parentheses, you give the variable name for which you are going to draw the scatter plot. Then we have line plots. For line plots, command is the same. That is plot, P-L-O-T. But an additional argument, which is optional, that is type is equal to L. L should be enclosed in quotation marks. This L stands for line, means that you are drawing a line plot. Another plot we will learn today is bar plots. For bar plots, you use command bar plot instead of plot. To draw a pie plot, you use command P-I-E pie. For box plots, you use box plot command. If you are going to draw a histogram, then we use hist command. These are the basic formats of these plots. All these plots can get additional arguments. For example, here the plot command can get another additional argument that is type is equal to L. Inshallah, we will also learn about those additional arguments in today's lesson. Now let's suppose we have a data frame called DF. If you want to know about what data frames are, then you will have to go back to my previous lessons and search for a lesson about data frames, that is data structures. So there in that lesson, you will learn about data frame. So this is a data frame. The name of the data frame is DF. And this data frame, as you can see, has 13 observations. About each people, we have variables like age, salary, and gender. For example, here, Roshan has age 10 years or months or whatever you call it. But in real data, when you're going to make data frames, you must specify the unit of measurement with each of these uh, variables. For example, with age, you must mention that whether it will be in the years in months or in days. Similarly, with salary, you will have to mention whether they are in park rupees, dollars or pounds, etc. So plotting can help us find the distribution, for example, of any variable like salary. How is it distributed? How many people are getting lower salary and how many are getting higher salary and whether the distribution is skewed or not. We can find the relationship between age and salary, whether the salary increases with age or decreases. We can find the relationship between salary and gender to find which gender is getting higher salaries. We can also find the gender frequency. Now let's find the distribution of salary. For this, you use command plot. As I already showed you in my previous slide, that plot is a command that will plot the distribution of any variable. This is the variable. DF is the data frame, and this dollar sign is used for extraction of a variable. Salary is one of the variable in the data frame DF. So DF dollar salary, DF dollar age, DF dollar gender. So data frame for extraction, we use dollar sign, and then this is the variable name. So what will this plot? This will plot something like this. The salary will be on the y-axis and on the x-axis you will get the index. Index means that this is the first person's salary, the second person's salary is here, the third person's salary is somewhere here, the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth and thirteenth person. The plot shows that most of the people are getting salaries under 6,000. Only three people are getting higher salaries and they are above 7,000. Now, if you are going to draw a line plot instead of that scatter plot, then you add another additional argument type. So type is equal to L, L enclosed in these quotation marks. This L stands for line. Let me tell you about one thing that line plot is more useful when on the x-axis you are going to take time as a variable or anything that goes with time like hours in the cricket like time series plot and then we have extracted salary from the data frame with dollar sign and then in between every additional argument in the function you must type a comma so comma then type is equal to l means line plot so this will plot a line plot like this this is again the same thing, but instead of points, you get a line for those points. So this show a trend, like how the salary is going up and down among the persons. But this is not a good idea to have a plot for salary only. There must be something like time on the x-axis. Now let me tell you how to calculate the frequency of genders. So for frequency, you use command table. 
This table command will tell you how many males and how many are females in the gender. DF dollar gender will extract gender variable from the data frame DF and table command will calculate the frequency. This frequency means that we are calculating the frequency and then we are storing it in another variable called freq. So freq is equal to this command. And then when you type freq and click enter, you will get the frequency of male and females. So here females are 4 and males frequency is 9. What if you are going to plot the frequency of these males and females? then use the bar plot command on this frequency variable that is female 4 and male 9 so bar plot of frequency so you can see that number of males is greater than the numbers of female which is 9 and this is 4 you can also see the proportions of male with respect to female using a pi command so use pi command on this frequency and you will get these proportions among male and female as you can see, proportion of male is greater than female. Now let's use bar plot on salary, that is continuous variable. So here you can see that instead of typing plot, you have typed bar plot. Extract the salary variable and plot it on a bar plot. Here, the salary of one person can easily be compared with the other. For example, this person's salary is less than this. Similarly, this person has the highest salary among all the persons. And these two people have equal salary to find the frequency of the different salaries that is how many people are getting a salary of thousand how many people are getting a salary of two thousand or three thousand then you use bar plot command but inside this bar plot command you will use the frequency of df dollar salary so table is a command that was used for frequency finding for different salaries so table inside table you use df dollar salary and then you enclose all of this in the bar plot so this will draw a plot like this for you Although we find frequency of categorical variables, but here I'm showing you the frequency plot of continuous variable, which is not a good idea. A histogram is a better thing for that purpose. To find the frequency, we use table command. It would find the frequency of each salary and then bar plot will produce the bar plot. From this plot, you can see that most of the people are getting salary 2000 now let's turn towards histogram so histogram is a better idea for finding the frequency of continuous variables so use hist command to plot the histogram which will show you the data distribution and the frequency of data within a certain boundaries so this is the command hist and df dollar salary and this will produce a plot like this this is the histogram so use hist command to plot histogram which will show you the data distribution for example the highest number of people are getting salary from 0 to 2000 that is seven people this is the number of people that is frequency two people are getting salaries from 2001 to 4000 and so on this plot also shows us that the data is not normal it is skewed to one side so this is the skewness of the data now let's use another command that is box plot. For box plot, you use command box plot and then inside these parentheses you extract the variable from the data frame with dollar sign. The box plot would look like this. This plot tells you about the distribution of data, just like the scatter plot or the histogram. It divides the data into four quartiles. Each of the quartiles contains 25% of the data and there is a median line. This is the median line here in this box plot. 50% data lies above this line and 50% of data lies below this line. What do these two whiskers represent? This one represents the minimum most salary and this one represents the maximum salary. Okay, now let's draw the box plot for age, which is more clear. So box plot extract then the age from the data frame and it has been divided into four different quartiles very clearly. This is the minimum, this one represents the maximum age, this is the median age, and this one represents the outline. These are 25% data lies here, 25% of data lies here, 25% data, and then 25% data. This is more normally distributed as compared to the salary data. If you are interested in the box plot for male and female separately, then you will have to use this sign, which is also called as tilde sign, between a continuous variable, that is salary or age, and a categorical variable, that is gender.
So box plot and then extract the salary, which is the continuous variable, and also extract the gender variable, which is the categorical variable. And in between these two, use this tilde sign and then press enter. You will get a plot for male and female separately. So this is the box plot for female. That is the distribution of salary among female. This is the distribution among salaries of male. So there is more variation in the salaries of females as compared to the male salary. And the female salary is more normally distributed as compared to the male salary. The median in the female salary lies almost in the middle of the data, while the median in the male salary lies near to the first quartile. Now let's find the relationship between two continuous variables. For that purpose, you use a plot command. But here, instead of one variable, you give two variables. One for the x-axis and another for the y-axis. Remember, you must use comma between every two arguments in a function. So you will have to take one continuous variable on the x-axis and another continuous variable on y. So this is the plot command here. So plot, this is the age variable on x-axis and this one on the y-axis, we take this cell. When you hit enter, you will get a plot like this. This will tell you the relationship between two continuous variables. As you can see, the relationship is almost linear except these outliers. Now let's beautify our plots with optional arguments in the functions like giving colors, increasing the size of the points or width of the line, change the type of the line or the points, etc. So now go to this R Studio. We have the data frame DF. You can see this is your data frame DF. And these are three variables, age, salary and gender and 13 observations. Okay, now let's draw a plot for salary. So DF dollar salary and then hit enter. This is a distribution plot. Now, how do you beautify this plot with colors, with size of these points and with shape of these points? First of all, let's increase the size of these points. When you hit the up arrow key, the previous command will appear. Now, just add another additional argument, CEX, which is used for the size. So, sex is equal to 1. If you put 1, 1 is a default size. So it will produce the same size plot. Again, hit this up arrow key. The previous command will again reappear. Just change this one to two. The size of these points will increase. As you can see, the size has now increased. Now change it three. This will increase more. Okay, now let's change the shape of these points. These are now circular for shape, comma, and then we have an optional argument, PCH. This is for shape is equal to and if you put 1, 1 is a default circular shape. And if you change this to 2, you will see the shape has changed to triangle. 3, 4, 5, the shape will be changing. So this is 6, 7, 8, 9, and 15. So let's, we like this type of shape. For example, you don't like this black color of these points. So how do you color them? Add another additional argument, COL, which stands for color. So color is equal to, you can use either numbers here or you can directly type the color name. For example, if you want to type the color name, then you use two quotation marks, red. Now hit enter. The points color will change to red. You can type here like blue. So the points will become blue. Instead of typing red, blue, etc., you can also type numbers here. For example, number two represents a red color and number three represents a green color. Number four will show you blue color, red color. What if you want to give a title here to the plot? For the title, we use another optional argument, main, M-A-I-N. So main is equal to, it goes to the second line now. So main is equal to, inside the quotation marks, type the title, distribution of salaries, and hit enter. This title will appear on the top of this plot. What if you want a subtitle here, then use another optional argument, comma, and sub is equal to Roshan. This Roshan will appear somewhere here. Hit enter, and you see this is the subtitle. What if you want to change these labels, that is X label and Y label, and we have optional arguments. Let me 
remove all these things so that it becomes clear this is only plot L let's simplify the plot again okay. so a arrow key and now i want to add x lab which means the labels on the x axis here now it is indexed but i want to change it to something else like persons identity or something hit enter this will change to something like this and if you want to change the y label then comma and y lab is equal to like silly instead of df dollar silly you just type so so this will now change to something you can use all these optional arguments in all of the block for example in bar plot you can use these optional commands like color x label y label main and sub but there are some optional arguments that are specific for each of these different plots for example let's draw a bar plot a simple bar plot for like df dollar for example age so this is the age bar plot and there is an optional argument here which has let's color it curl to so it will become red other things like main is equal to will remain the same so title of the plot and let's draw a plot for the frequencies table of df dollar gender this will be more beautiful plot for giving names here so for example we don't like this f and m and we want something else here so name is equal to C of because we are going to give two arguments here. One is for example, first one is female and then the second one is male. Then just hit enter. You will see that instead of F and M, now a female and male appear. Now, if you want to know what type of arguments can I give inside these bar plots, I want to see how many or what type of arguments I can put inside the bar plot and use this question mark and type bar plot and then just hit enter. You will see all the arguments that you can give inside this part. For example, I can use width, space, names as we just used, and beside, horizontal, density, angle, color, border, x label, sub x label, y label, etc. etc. Now let's use these uh, width and space command. So box plot between these uh, males and females. And then let's use width command. Width is equal to because we are going to use the width for two different. So you have to enclose it in C combined function. You type one here and two here. One means for female, you are specifying the uh, width for female less than the male. The male's uh, width is double the female width. Look, this is double the female. So this is width. What about space command? Space will increase this distance between two bars. So add space is equal to, for example, two. So it will increase the space in between the bars. So what were the other uh, options here? They were like Horace. Let's use Horace remove these optional arguments and how is how is you type true or false and then this in close horace will plot it in horizontal way let's use another argument click on this help which is uh, the density so let's see what density does remove this and in density is equal to like 20 and you will see that what does density do you can see the density of these bars has decreased the number of lines on these bars increase it to 50 you can see now its density has increased let me show you the optional arguments for other plots as well for example you want to see what type of optional argument can you give to box plot just question mark with box plot and hit enter you can see you can give arguments like formula data subset na dot action etc here notch outline names of under the plot and border of the plot and you can start read the details of all of these options what do these options mean you can see the details and you can also see some of the examples here examples plots you can learn from this help now let's see for plot plot can get arguments like these inside type for example you can type l for lines p for points b for both c for the lines part alone of b o for both or plotted etc etc and these are the details of other options these are the examples question mark hist a hist can get uh, arguments like x that is the variable and then bricks i didn't talk about bricks command in histogram let's draw the histogram again so hist df dollar salary it will give you a histogram like this now let's give uh, the optional argument that is bricks bricks is equal to let's divide the data into two bricks 
you will get a histogram like this. It will divide the data into two. So uh, one uh, on one side, we have distribution of data from zero to like 5,000. So 10 people uh, are getting salaries from zero to 5,000. And only three people are getting above that salary. Six, yes, that's changed. This is from zero to 2,000 and then from 2001 to like uh, 3000 and then to 4000 5 6 7 and no people are getting salaries from 5000 to 7000 so that was all for today thank you for watching my video but don't forget to subscribe my channel i would be thankful to you and i would subscribe back if your subscription is visible to me bye